All right, last lesson of the unit. Um, I would like you to try on page three, it's actually page 388, try numbers one to three using Desmos. All right, so what this basically is, is going to take a system of equations. If you remember, a system is more than one. And using Desmos, you're gonna take these uh, equations and for example, maybe there's a parabola like this and like this, and you're going to use decimals to figure out where do those two equations intersect. Okay, it's just for you to kind of get used to the idea that a system might have more than one possible solution. Okay, so please do that. When you're finished, come back to this lesson. All right, assuming that you've done that lesson, um, that you've tried graphing some, let's now try and do this without technology without technology. You need to be able to graph this, you need to be able to solve these systems without using Desmos. All right, uh, the problem with using technology is you need to have the technology with you and you won't have that for these questions on the, on the test. Okay, so sketch the graphs on the same grid. Well, what does this graph look like? Y equals X plus seven squared. Well, this should look something like this. You have a graph. Now the y-intercept will be way up here at 49, but this is negative 7. Okay, and then what does this graph look like? Well, very quickly, the vertex would be negative b over 2a. So I think this is going to be negative 4. And then if we put that into the equation, uh, you're going to get negative 2 times negative 4 squared minus 16 times negative 4 minus 14. So this is negative 32 plus 64 minus 14. So I think that's negative, oh, positive 18. Okay, so negative 4, positive 18. It's going to be somewhere over here. And this is an equation that opens down. Uh, if we find what our x-intercepts are, let's do that really quickly. Okay, I'll go through this one fairly quickly because, you know, honestly, we should know how to do this already. If I divide everything by negative 2, you can have x squared plus 8x plus 7. And so this is x plus 7 x minus, or sorry, x plus 1. So you get negative 7, negative 1. All right, and so this parabola will look something like this. Um, the y-intercept here would be negative 14 down there. All right, though, so those are the two parabolas. What we're going to try to figure out is what are the points of intersection. Okay, you can see here's one, here's the other one. This one's easy to figure out. The point of intersection is negative 7, 0. The problem is the other one's a lot harder to figure out. And this is the limitation of graphing by hand. It's really hard to figure out what that point is. Okay. And so the idea here is we're going to know how to graph these, but to find the point of intersection, you should probably do it algebraically. And if you remember, that's very similar to what we did in grade 10, right? When we had systems of linear um, equations. So you all either had one solution, you had no solution, or the lines turned out to be the same and you had infinite solutions. We rarely found this point by graphing. We usually did it algebraically. Okay, so that's what we're going to move to now, solving algebraically. I will expect you to be able to graph the system, but to solve it, I won't get you to do. It'll be only algebraically. Okay, so let's quickly do a refresher on how to solve these systems. Substitution meant we would substitute the value for y into y. So you would go, if you remember we did this, equation 1, 
equation 2, and we're going to sub y equals 4x minus 4 into equation 2. So you're going to get 2, still have x there, plus 3, we have a new value for y, equals negative 5. And solving this, you got 2x plus 12x minus 12 equals negative 5. 14x equals 7. x is 7 over 14, which is a half. And so then you would know the x value. To get the y value, you had to plug it back into the equation. And if you plug y, x equals a half, back into this equation, you end up with 4 times a half, which is 2 minus 2, and there was your solution. That was substitution. Elimination, you had to line up the equations. Okay, so what we want is the x's to be in a row, or sorry, in a column, and the y's, they're not in this case. So let's rearrange this one. So equation 1 would become, let's take everything, I think this, if we move this 3x over there, that'll work. So I'd have negative 3x minus 2y equals negative 9. So that's equation 1. And then 2x plus 3y equals 11. That's equation 2 now. But you can see we don't have coefficients the same. So let's multiply this equation by 2. So I get negative 6x minus 4y equals negative 18. And let's multiply this one by 3. So you'd have 6x plus 9y equals 33. Now you have the x's lined up, the y's lined up, and we have coefficients that are the same. Well, they're opposite signs. So how do we get them eliminated? Because this is method elimination. I'm going to add negative 6x plus 6x is 0. This is going to be 5y, and this is going to be 15. So y is 3. So then plugging 3 back into one of the equations. So let's sub y equals 3 into equation 1. So negative 2 times 3 equals 3x minus 9. And x is 1. Okay, so hopefully you remember those two methods. If you don't, rewind this uh, video and try to watch it again. Try it a couple times to make sure that you're familiar with them. Um, we're probably going to use substitution more than elimination. You'll see why. Okay, so you did a bunch of these on Desmos, and you can see that there are several possibilities. You can have zero solutions, you could have one solution, or you could have two solutions. But that's all we'll be dealing with. I suppose you could have infinite solutions if the two parabolas were the same, but don't usually see that. Okay, so solve this system, not graphically, algebraically. Okay, here's equation one, here's equation two. Let's sub equation one into two. So we're going to take the value for y in equation one and put it into equation two. So x plus, what is the value of y? One-third x squared minus 3. And we've just put that in for y. Okay, this is, a, any, this is an equality with one variable, just x. So let's take a look at it. We'll rearrange it a little bit, I think. All right. So one-third x squared plus x, and if I add 3, I get 0. 
Now what? How do I solve this? Well, maybe I want to get rid of the fraction. Multiply everything by 3. And then how do I solve this? Well, I can factor out an x. And so x has two possible answers. Either x is 0 or it's negative 3. All right? So I have two answers, but that's not what the question asks for. It's asking for what is this, the solution for the system. Okay, now if you think back, this is two parabolas. We're looking for two points. What are the two points that work here? Well, I know the two x values. So let x be 0 and let x be negative 3. And I'm going to put it into equation 2. Okay, so let's put it into equation 2, just because then I can stay away from the fraction. So I get 0 plus y is negative 3, so y is negative 3. So my first solution has x is 0, y is negative 3. And then if I put a negative 3 into that equation... I get y equals 0. So the second solution is if x is negative 3, y is 0. Those are the two points that will satisfy that system. Okay, so take a couple of minutes to try this one on your own. All right, again, substitute one of the equations into the other. Give it a shot. All right, now that you've tried it, let's sub y equals x plus 2 squared minus 1, that's equation 1, into equation 2. Okay, so here is my value for y, x plus 2 squared minus 1 equals x squared minus 4x minus 5. Okay, so taking a second there to look at this, I said this was y, and I'm putting it in here. So now you have an equation that you can solve. So this is going to be x squared plus 4x plus 4 minus 1 is x squared minus 4x minus 5. If I subtract x squared, they disappear, so I end up with 8x plus 3 equals negative 5, so 8x is negative 8, x is negative 1. So this time I'm only going to have one solution. x is negative 1, let's find y. So sub x is negative 1 into equation 1. So y is negative 1 plus 2 squared minus 1. y is 1 minus 1. y is 0. There's my solution. Okay, so solving systems algebraically, you probably need to try a few of those. Okay, again, I'm going to skip the word problem, so you can go to page 397. All right, when you're doing these, I would recommend trying to graph some of them, just to review how to graph parabolas, so you can look at the system. You can use Desmos to check, but make sure you're able to solve algebraically. That's the key to the lesson. Okay, once you've done that, you can do the review. And you can do the practice test. All right, and then I will post a test. I will post a test in Chapter 5. So that's this unit. Try it. See how you're doing. If you want me to mark it, please submit it via email. All right, good luck with this unit. 
Please let me know if you're having trouble, if there's something you're not sure about. Okay, good luck.